not to bore you, I know you all want to run away, so I'll be as brief as I can. This is just to give you a brief overview of how robotics can help us in the future in caring for our patients. Okay, now we will broadly speak about it in four categories. One is rehabilitation of patients with injuries as well as after other conditions like stroke and everything. Then how robotics can help patients with physical disabilities, amputations, how we can enhance sports training and how robotics are involved in sports. Okay, now if we want to rehab any patient with any disability, like say a stroke, a paraplegia or anything similar, then what we need to do is to first assess their abilities, to quantify what all they can do and what all they cannot do, then set up goals of treatment or interventions that we can do to get them better from their state to the next level. Then we find, find strategies which we can use to implement that improvement and then we have to reassess whether that has worked and set new goals. So robotics can help in each one of these phases. How? So first of all, we have different type of robotics. One category would be end effector devices where those are the ends of whatever prosthesis or uh, orthosis or whatever you use. That's the end element. Like in this case, there would be uh, ankle or the foot part of that robotic. There would be actuators which will show us the changes in length or the dimensions. And you have the other junction, the knee module. So these end effector or, uh, devices would give us information as well as tell us what all the patient can do and then we can monitor them as the patient improves as to what all they are able to achieve. So those are one different uh, one category of the robotics. The other is the exoskeletal robotics. These are applied from outside to various type, uh, parts of the body. So as end stage N ones can be used to replace these are in addition or to the normal function body so we've been using exoskeletal uh, devices for a long long time like the picture on the left is the re uh, splint that we use for wrist drop radial nerve palsy where we have outriggers which help extend the fingers passively and we ask the patient to actively move the fingers and flex the fingers they keep the fingers supple until the nerve recovers. But we can use further devices like devices like this for the leg and that for the hand, which will help the patient to use that hand with a precise grip strength and a precise amount of force, like holding a leg, which will need uh, a lot of precise uh, movements, not to crush it at the same time to be able to hold it. Now, coming to this, we can use all these devices as well as record all the, de uh, the things that the device does. And there is no, uh, there is phenomenal scope for this because if we can uh, record all the movements that the patient started with, what limitations they had, how they progress with our therapy, and how, what are their status now, and what is expected goals and that can be relayed anywhere across the world with the technology and so we can have a specialist stroke physiotherapist in United States treating a patient who's there in the remotest will, uh, areas of Africa as long as there's technology available to connect the two and they can be monitored advised by the specialist centers like the New York, New York rehab centers and technology can be used to improve patients at the home level using expertise from the best centers. Now, next is, we, they can be made, uh, used to make it a bit more entertaining as well. You can use the Nintendo Wii, the uh, a bubble board type of uh, fitness activity, or something like a playing 10 pin bowling virtual using Nintendo Wii to improve the cooperation 
the acceptance and uh, for the patient to do those activities. That increases the compliance phenomenally because we have to consider that these patients have got some disability which they feel are, is permanent, they have low moods, low compliance, and these can be used to improve their compliance as well as being very effective. Now, this is a state which is being developed that which uses the EMG signals of various parts of functioning body remaining to use those impulses to generate uh, algorithms and then activities so that suppose there is a patient with an, a, a sort of a bowel elbow or a trans elbow at the disarticulation, the muscle balance or the EMG from the biceps and triceps can be used to do activity which would move their elbow. So have coordination so that they can use that prosthesis much, much better way. Like for example, this gentleman here with an above elbow amputation has a prosthesis which can be used to hold various things, increasing his capacity to do daily activities as well as being held in profession. So this guy with this hand can now drive and become, uh, uh, have functional income. So it improves their quality of life phenomenally. Next is something called Cybertlon. I'm not sure most, uh, if any of you are aware. Now, like Paralympics, there are Cybertlons which are international competitions for patients with various disabilities, various amputations, where they do activities like assembling a block, putting on an electric bulb, using a prosthesis, and there are competitions and there are winners for that which improves the amount of uh, the ability that these patients can do as well as it prom promotes the industry to put in more money and develop these technologies so that the quality of life of these patients can be phenomenally improved. The Paralympics, we all know how this has revolutionized the um, capacity or the capabilities of all the professionals. Like on the left, we've got uh, a carbon fiber uh, uh, prosthesis which can be used for mobilization. It in fact has 80 layers of carbon fiber which are thinner than the human hair layered on top of each other which gives it the lightweight and the bounciness that can be used for running. And that in the near future, I'm sure, will supersede normal people with actual legs as well. They will be faster than them. On the right, we can see now the wheelchairs are customized. They have molds of their uh, sitting position and have their carbon fiber spokes and wheels, which make it incredibly lightweight and fast. There are patients with above knee amputations who can do a sit ski, like sit on a, a uh, like on a ski and participate in those competitions. Sports can be enhanced with technology as well. Now uh, there, it, there are various various applications. One of them is having sensors like in cricket. If you have a sensor at the top of your back, it can record, it can give you entire graphs of how your swing was, where did you miss the ball, why did you miss the ball, and the, all that knowledge can be used by the coaches as well as the players to improve their performance, iron out their deficiency. And this has been used by the British cricket team and may be useful in getting the success that we had for the World Cup. Now, same things are used in football. We've got sensors in the football, in the athlete's shoes, in goal line technology. All these are being used to see how the perf uh, performance can be improved. Where would the patients, uh, where would the uh, footballers be positioned? How that uh, game, the team can be improved as well as the person, individual, have their abilities in the hands. These technologies now help us study a lot more than what the former coach used to be saying. Oh, no, you run, don't run fast. You run, need to run faster. That's all that we could do before. But now we've got evidence to prove and to improve and iron out our deficiencies. And last but not the least, robots also now play sports. They have been used to use uh, playing footballs, 
and the prediction is that by 2020 they should have a robot team which could compete with the Premier League footballers. <laughs> okay, thank you. Any questions? I'm sure. <laughs>